The best Christmas I ever spent was in Argentina. I sent my family their cards and gifts before I left. I landed in Mendoza a few days before Christmas. I went into the Andes and I did not come out until after New Year's Day. Mwah! Unfortunately, I can't do that every year, but what we can do as comedy writers is turn any awkward or distasteful moment into a joke. It doesn't make the cringe or other bad feelings go away, but it does help. Now this is not an ad. I do not have any sponsors yet. I just want to stress that writing jokes is not a replacement for real professional help if you need it, which just about everyone does. I want to laugh at your jokes, and that means you need to be healthy enough to write them, so stay on that self-care grind. Here's how to turn holiday ugh into jokes. It would be easy to just write down everything people do to make you mad, and that's actually a good place to start. But our material can't just be that list. Often, the best way to approach it is to become the thing you're mad about. This saves you from sounding like you're preaching. If you become the thing that you don't like, you can satirize the interaction and make the point you want to make without that preachy feel. There's a link below to the video where we get into writing jokes with two stories. Keep that in your mind and become the thing you want to make fun of. Do you have an uncle who drinks way too much? Now you're the uncle who drinks too much. My uncle always drinks way too much at Christmas, but this year he seemed a lot more chilled out. And I think that's because this Christmas, I ate half a pound of weed. People want to get into politics with you? I don't normally like talking about politics except at family gatherings. I don't even hold these actual views. I just want to watch Aunt Martha dealing with my garbage takes on border security while she tries to carve a ham. People asking about your love life? I got so tired of my great uncle Doug asking about my relationships at holiday gatherings, I just started asking the same questions right back. But my mom says I have to stop simply because Doug died at Thanksgiving. Well, I'm sorry, but when's he going to get a girlfriend? I just want to remind you that nothing you say in stand-up needs to be true. All you have to do is be a decent person and get laughs. The second tool you can use is big things small and small things big. If your joke references something big like murder, explosions, wars, treat those things as small. But if someone didn't put the right amount of nutmeg in your eggnog, go supernova. Just about all of Seinfeld and Larry David's success hinges on this approach. Tiny slights and grievances are treated like world wars, giant problems more or less ignored. Lastly, don't forget to raise stakes. Most of what happens in life feels very impactful to us because we're part of the ongoing story of our lives. But trying to explain all that context will be very long and probably boring to the audience. Instead, try to figure out what the kernel of the situation is, the part that really makes you mad, and then pump that up by adding stakes. If there's a situation in your life that you know makes you mad, but you can't figure out exactly why it burns you up, try workshopping in your mind how the situation could have been even worse. Whatever element you added to make it feel worse could help you point to the reason you're already mad. Okay, more on raising stakes. Let's say someone forgot something that you needed for a dish that you're making at Thanksgiving and you suspect them of doing it on purpose. It's going to be clunky to write a joke about all that with all the context that we need to understand it. But instead, you could let it inspire you to write something silly that mirrors the experience. You could say you're a supervillain and you think your henchmen aren't serious about destroying the earth and they keep forgetting pieces of your doomsday device. You are not teaching a history class about your life. You're telling jokes based on your life. We want to get a sense of who you are through your material, but if a joke would be funnier with aliens or meteors or earthquakes, put them in. Guys, this can be a stressful time of year, and not to sound too much like your comedy dad, but if you're really dreading it, that might be a good thing to bring up with somebody like a therapist. And it can also help to channel stuff into jokes. Enjoy your holidays. Write some jokes. If you need help, ask for it. Imbibe responsibly. Don't eat a pound of wheat. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe, and maybe jump on the Patreon if you want to help me make more. And if you want to talk about comedy writing with people who are trying to do it in a constructive way, we also have a Discord channel. I'm filming. What's happening? Yeah. I could just order a pizza or something. Sure. Yeah, whatever you think. Okay. Love you so much.